Who is the most pathetic Republican senator? I know what you're thinking. It's obviously Ted Cruz. Almost anyone would say that, including most of his family. But we have a dark horse candidate, Lindsey Graham, speaking today at the Faith and Freedom Coalition Conference in Nashville, Tennessee, decided to debase himself to try to get Trump's favor, I guess. Take a look. You know what I liked about Trump? Everybody was afraid of him. Including me. <laughs> the Chinese ambassador came in and said, we're trying to figure out Trump. I said, take a number, get in line. <laughs> but here's one thing I can tell you about him, don't cross him. Don't you miss that? Don't you miss an America that people respected and were a little bit afraid of? Dear God. So that is, look, he's he's getting his applause by sucking up to Trump. But that is at least a genre that he has often dabbled in. If you don't recall, here are a few of the standout moments. I actually like President Trump. He's been very nice to me. He's allowed me to be in his world. He allows me to give my two cents worth about different issues when he was president. This is his party. If you don't get that, you missed a lot at CPAC. Let's just be honest, uh, the bad guys were afraid, uh, afraid of Trump. He's the most consequential Republican since Ronald Reagan. It's his nomination if he wants it. And I think he'll get reelected in 2024. And I'm not going to vote for anybody for leader of the Senate as a Republican unless they can prove to me that they can and advocate an American first agenda and have a working relationship with President Trump. Because if you can't do that, you will fail. President Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize and then some. President Trump is the most consequential Republican in the party. If Mitch McConnell doesn't understand that, he's missing a lot. As to President Trump, in that poll, you own the Republican Party, my friend. You are the hope of the future of conservatism, President Trump. Well, he owns the Republican Party, it's his nomination. The president has a hell of a story to tell about what he did for this country, and more importantly, what he can do. Uh, this is the party of Donald Trump. If you think otherwise, you're in for a rude awakening. If you play Trump, you're going to be a big loser. Okay, almost as big of a loser as Trump in 2020. Is it his party? Yes, in a very real sense it is, I suppose. Although those numbers have been shifting throughout the last year or so. He's also destroyed whatever it was in the Republican Party that Lindsey Graham at one point clearly liked. He still wants to be in power, and to do that, he has to have Trump's favor, that's true. But the like the idea that he can't see through Trump, he doesn't understand how petulant and spiteful Trump is, all of this is nonsense because he's experienced it. Lindsey Graham has been repeatedly attacked and mocked by Donald Trump. Donald Trump routinely in, in just recent days, calls him a Republican in name only. It is so pathetic and it might be that this is actually required of Lindsey Graham to stay as a relevant Republican to have Trump not support you know, a primary contender. Maybe he does have to debase himself in this way. But at some point you have to have self respect. If you supposedly admire strong men, consider being one, just resign. Whatever, whatever's left of your dignity, your self esteem, go take that, take that and the millions of dollars you have and just go live the rest of your life. It is so utterly pathetic. Yeah, uh, so I, I think it's even more pathetic than we uh, even realize because it's not that we don't realize it, it's that it's not repeated enough in the, in the press so that it doesn't sink into people. Trump and Lindsey Graham uh, were kind of battling for the 2016 uh, presidency uh, during those primaries. And then Graham said uh, a lot of terrible things about Trump when he thought, oh, this outsider is never gonna win, I have a better chance than he does. And then mm -hmm. when Trump crushed him and then he became uh, Gollum that you see here. <laughs> and <laughs> right? uh, but, but there's another layer to it. I mean, Trump has said the most horrific things about Lindsey Graham. He even doxed Lindsey Graham. He gave out his actual phone number in the middle of those primaries and said everybody should harass him. And, and so that was the beginning of his threats to other politicians, physical threats, right? And Trump once said about Lindsey Graham, he's one of the dumbest human beings I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and Lindsey Graham comes out and says, oh, he's a real leader. I love him. I think he's a real leader of the Republican Party. I love him. You, you gotta go through Trump, Trump, right? Like, Jesus Christ, man. 
I mean, it's so pathetic. You have to avert your eyes. You're like, Jesus, mm -hmm. it's like a gruesome train wreck. It's just disgusting to look at. That's who Lindsey Graham is. It's but the monkey thing that you talked about years ago. It's the just offering up your banana. Yeah. And that was what the speech was. It was him offering up his banana and the whole room was filled up with monkeys offering up their banana to Trump. They're yeah. all scared of him. One of the most pathetic human beings to ever walk the face of the earth. They're all terrified of him. Yeah, it, for monkeys, uh, they offer up their bananas to alpha males. And if the, the alpha male does not have to be nice to them. And if the alpha male is mean to them, they offer more bananas, okay? And it depends on the kind of monkey, of course. And one of the things <laughs> is, okay, there's a lot of- Different things. monkeys, different yeah. cultural practices, right. obviously, we all right. know this. Okay, anyways, so a lot of times it's bananas, but sometimes like just symbolically, they'll just offer their hand and they'll do this. <laughs> and that's, that's Lindsey Graham. Okay, and so if you were paying attention in that to the crowd in that speech, and he says, you know, I, I like that people were scared of him. People are like, uh, okay, polite applause. And then mm -hmm. he's like, even me. Every, then everyone's like, ah, that's true. <laughs> that's a Republican crowd. That's a super right wing crowd. Yeah. And their reaction to that, go back and rewind it if you want. It was hilarious, right? Once he admitted that he was part of the uh, banana giving monkeys, they're like, all right, go ahead, go ahead. Otherwise, we're going to call you a rhino and say how stupid you are. <laughs> 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 so look, as much damage as they do to the country, which is massive, seeing uh, people like Lindsey Graham humiliate themselves, debase themselves on a daily basis has been quite a pleasure. Oh Yeah, this was honestly some of the most cupped stuff I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know though, because there's of course Ted Cruz exists and Trump essentially told Ted Cruz that his wife had a horse face and was disgusting and so ugly that no one would ever want to have sex with her. And then Ted Cruz, there's that famous picture of him phone banking for Trump, oh. just like looking so miserable on the phone with the Trump side behind him. And you know, he's he's done nothing but praise Trump ever since. So like they're they're in a, you know. Uh, cuck off competition with one another, him and Lindsey Graham. <laughs> but you know, Graham did he did say something that was true, which was that Trump is the Republican Party, and that's. That's true. At, at that point, I don't. I don't know so much now. You know, his endorsed candidates haven't been winning, so maybe that shows that his stranglehold on the party is a little bit looser. But I mean, the Republican platform in 2020 was just whatever Trump wanted it to be. It was very true at that time. You needed to be nice to Trump. Uh, you know, otherwise your electoral chances were a little bit lower than they would be otherwise. So you know, they really were just truly an entire party of cucks. Yeah. yeah, so I want to build real quick off of what Rayvon said. So number one, if she called it a cuck off, fair enough. Uh, I think it's a cuck catastrophe. Uh, so they're and competing <laughs> for top cuck. Yeah, is what I think. Top cuck. <laughs> Pack your balls good. and go. Okay. Oh, oh. Oof. Okay. Uh, so uh, and you know how Jefferson and Adams had that rivalry, and at the end, uh, the one of them said, "Does Jefferson still live on their deathbed, or does Adams still live?" Uh, and uh, in this case, it's going to be, "Does Cruz still live?" <laughs> <laughs> Am I the biggest cuck of all? Okay, so, uh, but now to the serious point that Rayvana made. Look guys, it is a good strategy to intimidate people in your own party. It just is, so sad day. If that make people hurts people's feelings, uh, I don't care, it's true. I wish we had a progressive who could uh, bully uh, the cowards in, in the Democratic Party into compliance with higher wages, more health care for everyone. That's actually my goal that that person exists one day. Uh, but there's a, a second part of this. He said at the very end there, and Trump talked about it at that same conference. Don't you miss the good old days when Trump was in charge? And this is what Mike drives me nuts about the Democratic Party. Because unfortunately, that is probably a winning strategy for them to say. Look, if the Democrats had made it clear when Trump had the good economy that it was obviously riding off of Obama's wave, but like the idiots that they are, Pelosi, Schumer, and everybody else was like, oh no, you never make your own case. Mm -hmm. And so they pretended like Trump brought in this spectacular economy on day one. A thing that is not economically possible, that it's just not a factual thing. You cannot 
just get it going. It takes years to ramp up, right? And by the way, we're super fair. So Biden's economic issues are not just Trump's fault. So you could say, hey, normally you'd have a Trump wave. And by the way, Republicans do this all the time. They inherit a good economy from Democrats, they ruin it and hand it off to the next Democrat and then blame him for it, right? But that's not exactly what happened with Biden. Both Trump and Biden printed tons and tons of money, trillions of dollars and handed it largely to the biggest companies in the world, okay? And some to real Americans, yeah. that's what drove up inflation. And we did a story that shows you that there's a loophole in, in Dodd-Frank that's causing at least 25% of the price hikes. That's a giant number and that's bankers, but Trump loves the bankers. And so no, de deregulation, deregulate the banks. Do not touch my beloved banker friends. And so they did speculation on commodities like oil that drove the price up, drove the price up. But it's also Biden's fault. He can actually regulate the bankers right now and lower prices by 25 percent. But he won't do it because both parties are corrupt. Yeah. So they're going to get to say, "Hey, it was great during the Trump years," and people are going to kind of remember good economic times versus bad economic times, and we're ruined. Yeah.